Hey everyone, welcome to another Outdoor Intrigue video. Today we want to talk to you about a few simple things that you can do when you're out hiking and wild camping in the winter to be safe and comfortable. Really straightforward and easy, and hopefully they'll help you out, so let's jump in and show you what they are. If you're heading out into the winter hills, it's really important that you take something that will help you with traction. Even if there's not snow lying on the ground, it might be the case that you encounter ice or higher up where you can't see, there are snow patches or even snow coverage. It's gonna mean that you're gonna be slipping and sliding if you don't have something to help you out. So a really good traditional way is to carry an ice axe of some sort, which I highly recommend. And the other option is to carry some sort of foot traction. So here's some micro spikes, but you could also take crampons depending on the ground coverage and what type of snow you're dealing with. I would say that in most instances for hill walking in the UK, a pair of micro spikes is going to be something that you will often find will get you out of most situations. They don't weigh a huge amount, they don't cost a huge amount, but they'll help a huge amount. They're probably one of my biggest recommendations for things that people should take if they're not sure what they're going to encounter. So traction, really important. Think micro spikes, think ice axes, think crampons. You get the point. Lighting is extremely important in winter. The number of hours of daylight that you have are going to be hugely reduced. So you need to be thinking about whether the route that you're taking is going to allow you to complete it without running out of daylight and having to use a head torch. And in general, you're going to want to take a head torch on most hikes, but especially in winter, just to be careful. So think about head torches. Then I would suggest often to think about a spare head torch. In winter, I usually carry an extra emergency head torch. So it can be a smaller one that's a little bit lighter, but it means that you've got a backup. Should something go wrong with your main light, you're gonna be able to still get out of wherever you are with your backup. And on that same front, spare batteries and even a power pack if your headlight is rechargeable are really important. And that's the kind of thing you want to be thinking about in winter is a little bit more redundancy. You've got your main one, but you're thinking about a backup or recharging your main one. Just a little bit more impact when you haven't got as much light and you're potentially having to hike or do things in the dark a lot. So if you're out in the hills and you're wild camping in winter, you're likely to be spending a lot of time in your tent and a lot of time in the dark. So it's really important to think about lighting in the tent. And one way that you can deal with that quite easily is to take something that gives you a bit of a lantern lighting. Now you can get an actual lantern, but that's gonna mean a lot of extra weight, or for a lot less of a weight penalty, you can use something that adapts your existing headlight. This one here is a simple Petzl option. It's a little bit heavier, but it works really, really well, and it also makes a great case for your headlight. This is one from Mont Bell that's extremely light and works with any head torch. You just put it round and then you use a little carabiner to clip that onto the top of your tent. Now, most tents have a little place where you can hang something like this. It's a really great way to light your tent and obviously you can use a lower battery power so that you're using less of your headlamp um, power up and it gives you a better light to do things in the tent by read, cook, etc. So a really good suggestion these. Your waterproof shell layers are always really important when out, whether you're out hiking or while camping in the hills, particularly if you're out in the UK or out in the Scottish Highlands. Um, I would say that in winter they're even more important. So you need to be thinking about maybe taking slightly heavier duty options than what you would do in summer. Something that you really trust and certainly taking a top and a bottom pretty much on any outing you're on. The, um, the idea being that you want to know that if you were stuck out wherever you're going overnight and had to be okay, that you'd be giving yourself enough protection for that to be the case. And a really good waterproof shell is going to help a lot. It will not only keep you dry, but it'll be able to keep the wind off you and add a lot of heat. So when you're going out in the winter, do think about taking something that's going to be heavy duty and good quality, whatever that means to you. And I would say that spending a little bit extra on your winter shell is well worth it. If you want to check out some of the waterproofs that we highly recommend and things that we use in the mountains, then we'll link the video here for you. When you're out in winter, one of the big challenges is staying warm, particularly if you're going to be out while camping. So some things that you can do to really easily help with that are take a pair of down socks like these, or even an extra pair of normal socks that are going to be dry and nice and warm, so that when you get to camp, you can put those on. Highly recommend that. The other option is obviously taking a hat. Now that's great when you're on day hikes, but especially if you're wild camping. I've got a down hat here, a normal hat, whatever hat suits you, but definitely suggest taking a hat. Another thing that's great when you're out wild camping in winter is a set of foot warmers. Those you can put on when you get into camp and they'll keep you warm for up to eight hours, as they say on the pack, and they really do work very well. You can also use those if you're hiking and it's really cold. You can actually wear them whilst you're moving. So those are great options. Think about extra options that are gonna be dry and help you to keep warm. 
When you're out on a day hike in the winter, heading out into the hills, I highly recommend that you take something like an insulated blanket, a blizzard bag, a bothy bag, or a bivy bag. Something that means that if you get caught out in bad weather, you're gonna be able to climb into it and give yourself some protection and added warmth. Not only for yourself, but should you come across someone else who's in trouble or injured, it's really helpful. If you're wild camping, I think it's sometimes less important because you actually normally have a shelter of sorts with you. It might be a bivy or a tent, as well as all your sleeping kit which would allow you normally to be able to get out of the elements utilizing that. I'm not saying you shouldn't carry it, but if you're thinking about weight, then you could go for not carrying it when you're out with your full kit. And if you're out on a day hike or even a run sometimes in the hills, I would take something like that with me or normally some sort of small lightweight bivy so that I know that I'm gonna be able to cover myself if it gets really bad. A really important one for most times of the year, but especially in winter, is keeping your kit dry. So when you're putting your kit in your backpack, whether you're out on a day hike or an overnight or on multi-days, multi-weeks, think about your dry bags. Even if your backpack says that it's waterproof, there's a good chance that if you're out all day in heavy rain, you're gonna get some sort of water ingress. So what I would recommend is using a dry bag to keep your important kit dry, especially. There's lots of great options out there, all different sorts of weights. DCF bags that are probably a bit too expensive to warrant it, but weigh nothing. Some of these great ones made of event that you can squeeze the air out of. You know, there's all sorts of options, but a great thing to do, keep important kit dry in your pack. In the winter, you're gonna want more insulation. So it's important that you carry something like a down jacket or a synthetic insulated jacket that's gonna help you to bulk up your warmth when you need it most. If you stop in for lunch or a long break and you're gonna be taking pictures or whatever else, you're gonna to wanna to put something warm on. And if you're wild camping, you're definitely gonna want it when you stop and you get your tent up overnight to help you boost your warmth. So take a down jacket, something like this, like the one I'm wearing or a synthetic layer, but just take extra insulation. Even if it's a heavy fleece, it doesn't matter. Something in your pack that you know that if you need to, you can add some warmth to the system that you've got. One of the most important and hardest things to nail when you're out, especially in winter, is gloves and keeping your hands warm and protected. You're gonna to have to play around to find exactly the right system for you. But the main things to reiterate are, take more than one pair. Many times in winter, I would suggest taking three different pairs. That's gonna allow you to have a pair that you're using and you're gonna get soaked through, and then you're gonna have a spare, and you're gonna have an emergency pair, or you're gonna have a pair that if you're wild camping, you can use in the tent to keep your hands warm whilst you're doing things in there that are gonna be dry. But the main thing is to have multiple pairs. That's gonna look different for everyone depending on the kinds of routes and the kinds of things that you're doing, but it is very important. There's often times where you can get a system that works well, so you can have some sort of thin to medium liner glove with the glove that you could then slip over that to give you more protection and warmth when you need it, and then some sort of waterproof layer that goes over that, like a mitt, like I've got over here in my hands, or you could go for something that's just really warm and you can put your hand straight into, like these waterproof mitts over here. There's gonna be a whole load of different glove options you're gonna need, and it's gonna especially depend on how cold it is where you're going, whether it's gonna be wet, whether it's gonna be snowy, whether you're gonna be scrambling, whether you're gonna need dexterity or you can just have your hand in a mitt all the time. There's so many options. I mean, the sad thing to tell you is these aren't even half probably of the gloves that we have at home because the amount of times that you buy gloves and then they don't work out and you need a different type or you need to have multiple types to cover all the different things you do. <laughs> It can be a nightmare, but I tell you what is much worse than having lots of gloves with you is having freezing cold hands that you can't feel and you can't do anything with. So it's a really important one, especially in winter. Figure out your gloves, take extras. Highly recommend that you take something that allows you to give yourself a bit of face coverage when you're out. Whether it's just the wind, the wind blowing snow or rain or ice directly at you, it's a huge help. So think about a balaclava, some sort of snood or neck gaiter that you can then also roll up over your face. You're gonna be able to block out and help to cover all the bits of skin that are exposed and getting hit and frozen. I often on many hikes will wear some sort of snood. You can just have it around your neck, not bothering you. And then when you need it, you can pull it up and give yourself some protection. In really hectic winter conditions, particularly if you're gonna be wearing goggles and things like that, I highly recommend taking a balaclava. There's lots of different options and weights and it can really help to add some comfort. Hand warmers. I can't recommend them enough. When you're out in winter, it is a huge help to be able to add that bit of warmth to your hands. And you'll find that they last for hours and hours, and no matter what gloves you're wearing, they're gonna boost the warmth a hell of a lot. 
There's an additional hack that hand warmers are really great for, and that is when you're using your gas canister for cooking in the winter when you're wild camping. If you take one of your hand warmers and you pop it at the bottom of your gas canister before you light up, it's gonna mean that you get much better gas flow consistency. Now, there are obviously risks whenever you're using a gas canister, but the reality is in cold conditions, this is not gonna create any difference in terms of risk. Um, there's many people who use this, and I've used it in many instances, to help to cook in really, really cold temperatures, and it does help a lot to boost the gas flow. More important even than that, though, is warming the gas canister up before you start to use it. So stick it in your pockets or in your quilt with you, and then as you're about to use it, pop your hand warmer on the bottom, light up, and you're going to have great gas flow even in freezing cold temperatures, and I'm talking minus 10, minus 11, colder. So that wraps up our top tips for hiking and wild camping in winter. A few tips and tricks that we know will help you to be more comfortable and safe when you're out. They've definitely helped us, they're tried and tested. If you've got some tips and tricks of your own, please let us know down in the comments below. We'd be glad to hear about them. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. We always appreciate it. Think about subscribing if you haven't already. Check us out on Instagram at Outdoor Intrigue. And we'll see you next time. Take care of yourselves, guys.